Democratic Congressman Brad Schneider of Illinois. Congressman Schneider, thank you for being back on the show. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's great to see you. So let's start this with, with this. Why now? What was the catalyst for you to move forward with this days after that comparison that was so offensive was already made? Was it what McCarthy said? Was that the trigger for you? No, it's what Marjorie Taylor Greene said. It's not often I find myself agreeing with uh, Mitch McConnell, but what she said was outrageous and, and reprehensible. She um, demeans the memory of the six million Jews killed by the Nazis, the survivors, their families. But she also dishonors the, the memory of all those who fought and, and all those who died fighting against uh, Nazi Germany and protecting America and, and protecting democracy. And it, she doesn't back away from it. She, doubled da she doubles down. And so uh, McConnell's right. She needs to be sanctioned, and, and the responsibility for that lies in the House, and the path to that is with the censure. Why make that sanction a censure rather than, for example, an expulsion effort? Well, I'm going to focus on what she said here with respect to the Holocaust. Uh, you know, she's equating the national response to a, a pandemic uh, to the murder of six million Jews. Uh, that is reprehensible and, and needs to be called out, and she should be censured for this. Uh, do I think she should be expelled from the House? Absolutely. But at this moment, the, the tool we have is censure. And uh, I, I looking for, I'm hoping we will bring it to the House uh, floor uh, when we get back. But, Congressman, as you know, that tool has been brought forward out of the toolbox, if you will, in the past a couple of times. A censure resolution. I think there was an expulsion effort as well. Those have gone anywhere. So w do you think or what makes you think that your resolution could actually have legs and do anything concrete? Well, what we're seeing is members of both parties from both chambers calling out Marjorie Taylor Greene for her reprehensible remarks. And so I, I think I, I expect the, the Republicans will join us in this. Uh, she has uh, dishonored uh, not just the, the House of Representatives. She has the, become the face of the Republican Party and uh, making it hard to have any credibility, as I believe, as a Republican, when you have uh, the, the primary spokesman uh, saying stuff like, uh, What's happening with the pandemic is, is like the yellow stars and uh, trains and, and gas chambers. Uh, there is no comparison, and, and to do so is both disgusting and dishonors the House. We mentioned a moment ago that she has dug in. She obviously has not backed off of this. And in fact, Congressman, you know, in some ways, we know that she has fundraised off things like this, off of Democratic opposition to the, the things that she says. Was there, is there any concern in your mind that what you're doing is kind of what she wants, that this just gives her more oxygen moving forward? And the fact that we're having you on to talk about it gives her more oxygen. Right. Look, there's going to be people who are, are going to like her combative style or, or there are going to be people who are like what she's saying. But the fact of the matter is we can't let what she says go unchallenged. Uh, her comparison to the Holocaust is uh, a, a, a threat to our ability uh, to make sure that we never see a genocide like that. Uh, other things that she's been saying is, uh, you know, just a, a threat to the way we govern. We need two functioning parties. Uh, Tim Ryan was uh, very eloquent talking about it last week in the House. We need two functioning parties if we're going to move forward on the things we have to to build this country, to make sure our children have the opportunities they deserve, to make sure that the United States continues to lead in the post-COVID 21st century economy. And Marjorie, T Marjorie Taylor Greene makes that more difficult for all of us. So she can do her fundraising or whatever she wants. We have to stand up to her. And I'm not going to sit idly by and let, let her go without um, being confronted. So to be clear, you're making the calculation then that that the 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 potential importance of calling out what she's saying and being very specific to say this is wrong, this is gross, this is disgusting is more important than starving her of any oxygen. Is that kind of a fair categorization or summation of what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. She's got her platform and uh, you know that that's unfortunate and that's just a circumstance of the moment we're in. Uh, but we can't be silent. We can't hope she goes away. She's not going to go away on her own. She's going to go away when good people stand up. As Edmund Burke said, uh, the, the best thing, uh, the only way evil survives is if good people stand silent. What do you make of McCarthy rolling out that anti-Semitism bill, calling out Democrats, claiming that they're the ones, you know, fomenting anti-Semitic rhetoric? Look, as a Jewish American, I've been fighting against anti-Semitism my whole life. I am a part of the bipartisan anti-Semitism task force. We see growing anti-Semitism in this country uh, coming from both sides, whether it was Charlottesville and, and the chance that Jews will not replace this or the events we saw coming from the far left this weekend. Uh, anti-Semitism is hate and hate is hate. We need to confront it and challenge it everywhere we see it. I'm going to call it out whether it's coming from the left or the right. Uh, when okay. people on my side of the aisle uh, said anti-Semitic things two years, not only did I call it out, I did it publicly and I did it in writing. And I will continue to do that. 
But McCarthy needs to deal with the issues in his own conference. Uh, together, Republicans and Democrats, we need to deal with the issues of hate in our country. Before I let you go, I want to quickly get you on this bill to form potentially a bipartisan January 6th commission. Um, if that vote fails and the odds, as we just talked about on this show before you came on, are looking kind of slim in the Senate, do you believe the House should move forward with setting up a select committee? Is that something you'd support? 100 percent. Look, this is the attack on the Capitol January 6th was not just an attack on the building, on the people working there, members of Congress, our staff, the Capitol Police. The attack on January 6th was an attack on our democracy, and it's not over, and, and they're not giving up. So we have to understand what happened. It would be far better to have a nonpartisan independent uh, commission like the House passed, and hopefully the Senate will pick up. I'm hopeful that the, the Republican senators will join with the Democrats, pass that, and send it to President Biden for signature. But if they stand in the way, we can't let them block America's understanding of what happened, and the House needs to proceed independently. Just speaking of January 6th, there's some headlines out there about safety concerns among lawmakers, specifically Democrats, ahead of, you know, now that they're home for this district work period, especially because of what happened on the insurrection. Are you concerned for your own safety or security? Are you doing anything different to try to reduce that risk? You know, I was in the Capitol on, on January 6th. I was in the yeah. chamber. Uh, the picture you guys keep showing of me taking cover as they were trying to break into the, the, the House chamber that day. I've taken actions uh, every day since then. I haven't gone a, a day without or a night without thinking about what happened then and, and worrying about the safety for myself, my family, my team, and for our nation. And, and that's, again, going back to the need for the commission. That's why we have to understand what right. happened and take all the steps to make sure nothing like it happens again. I'm just curious, what are those steps that you're taking? Are you hiring you know, more security? Have you installed systems at your home? Like, can you give us any insight into that? Yeah, I, I've taken steps to make my home more secure, and uh, I'll leave it at that. 